Hello and welcome to another episode of Coffee Chat. I'm Anson. I'm Sangwa. And we're from Eastern, Eastern Music. Music. Eastern Music is a company that started in 1978 and we deal in all kinds of things related to Chinese orchestra instruments. Mm. So we sell instruments and we also do lessons and we do repairs and restoration. Yes, and in this episode, we have a special guest with us, Mr. Patrick. Hello, Mr. Patrick. Hello, everyone. Hello, Samwa, and hello, Anson. Hi, Patrick. Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm an instrumentalist. Uh, I'm a young thing instrumentalist <laughs> in Singapore, and I've been teaching in Singapore schools for many, many years. And today, I'm very happy to be here to share my experience as an instructor um, over here with every one of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Patrick, how was your learning, uh, music learning journey like when uh, growing up, when you were young? Alright, when I was um, in primary two, my mom uh, actually asked me to go and join Chinese orchestra. Wow. So um, during that time, I don't even know what Chinese orchestra is. I just said, oh, okay, then I'll just go and join. So during our time, uh, our Chinese orchestra doesn't have as many instructors as now. Uh -huh. So last time, uh, it's like, at the orchestra, there are only a few instructors that have to teach many, everything. Yeah, they have to teach everything. So I remember there is no such thing as Yang Qing instructor during my time. Or oh, pipa instructor. Yeah, it's a pipa instructor taking over the whole plug string instrument. So my growing up in, in the orchestra was actually in, in a very leisure and relaxing way because um, the pipa instructor don't really know Yang Qing a lot. He, mm. he can only teach me a very basic thing and most of the time, my seniors are the ones that are teaching me. Oh, yeah. And the thing is that my seniors don't even know what they are doing <laughs> also at that time. So basically, I, I, I grew up not having a very... Um, strict environment. Not very a uh, very strict environment and also not very professionally trained. Mm -hmm. So it is really very... Um, very... How, how do I... Tough? Is it tough or... It is difficult? tough in the sense that I could not catch up with a lot of things in mm. orchestra because I was not trained properly. Their basics were not good. Nah. Yeah, our basic foundation was very bad because uh, the one instructor could not take care of so many students. Mm. So I will say that the students nowadays are really, really lucky to have like individual instrument for, uh, for every instructor. They will have a individual instrument. Mm, so mm. I think this is something that uh, I'm very happy to see right now. Yeah, I I think, um, yes, a lot of schools, they have like Yang Qing instructor for Yang Qing players and Pipa for Pipa players. Yeah. I mean, there's still some schools which are one person takes a Depends few. Depends on the school's la. budget. La. Yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, instructors definitely um, enough to go around if the school uh, is able to hire mm. individual uh, mm. instructors. Yes. And how about your you know, uh, individual lessons when you went overseas for your uh, further studies? Um, actually, I have been doing it in a very amateur way mm -hmm. since primary school because I was so bad with Yang Qing that I, at a point, I actually wanted to quit oh, the Yang Qing. What made you stay? And actually, I... When I go to secondary school, my secondary school doesn't have any more uh, Chinese orchestra. So I actually joined the community club Chinese orchestra. Uh, that was Ching San Chinese orchestra hey. last time. <laughs> oh. so, uh, during, <laughs> <laughs> so during that time, I continued to play. But because my basic foundation was so bad mm -hmm. that the conductor actually asked me to go and play percussion instead of staying in oh, I don't Yang remember Qing. hearing that because <laughs> all I hear about is like, wow, Patrick was the Yang Qing player in your uh, no, in no, Chinsan, no. It's, like, it's really good. No, I, was, I was really, really bad with my basic foundation. So I, I, I thought of quitting because I didn't want to play drum. I didn't want to go percussion, but I was forced to go percussion because I was not good enough to catch up. So during that time, I was quite demoralized. So I mm. thought that maybe this is really not for me. So when, when I just go play a few years, then I actually quit during my sec three time. Oh. Yeah. But I, I really love Chinese orchestra. I, I love being inside 
a part of the team. I love playing music, but I was just not good enough and I don't know where to go. Okay. So um, when I go to Poly, mm -hmm. when I was in 18 years old, uh, it was in Tamasic. Okay. So I joined Tamasic Poly Chinese Orchestra. I thought maybe Yang Qing is not for me. Why not I join another instrument? Oh. So I actually choose Di Zi. Well, at one point, you yeah. were not a Yang Qing player. Yeah, I was. <laughs> There was a point where I was not a Yang Qing player. I went this, I was very happy to, mm -hmm. to learn a new instrument. I said, mm, now this time I got the instructor to teach oh, me there, Yang Qing. There is a specific. Yeah, so I, I'm going to learn this instrument well. Mm -hmm. So I took two lessons with the instructor, learning the very basic things. Mm -hmm. Then the president of the Tamasic Chinese Orchestra tell me, uh, hey Patrick, our all the seniors for Yang Qing has graduated, and okay. I heard that you have background. Uh -huh. <laughs> ah, so they said, ah, maybe we want you back in Yang Qing. Okay, uh, okay. I thought, but I just learned this, this. But I thought mm, maybe okay, I give it a try one more time. Okay, yeah. Okay. So this time when I go go back to Yang Qing, I was the same. I, I couldn't read scores. I, I I couldn't do a lot of things. So the conductor tell me, uh, why not you go and take private lessons? Okay. That's where I, I took lesson from Chi Jian Qing Lao Si. Uh. Yeah, so I actually truly learned Yang Qing at the age of 18. Oh, oh that's quite a late. Also, so, uh, I started profit, uh, yeah, like the learning you, uh. like <laughs> in my early 20s. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> learning Yang Qing. So, to, to, to be fair, this is actually very late. For, for, I share the same thing. Yes, for learning an instrument, this is truly very late. So, this is something that I, I, I hope that I can change mm. when I graduated from the Conservatory of Music. I thought maybe this time, as a Yang Qing instructor, I want to make sure that all the students have the correct kind of teaching methods, the, the basic foundations to be strong enough, and Yang Qing is going to be one of the strongest um, one of the strongest instruments in the orchestra, and the students is going to be profited from all this training. Yeah, actually, that's that's my goal also when mm. teaching uh, Yang Qing. I want, you better be the best section in the orchestra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, learning during our time, during mm. your time, during Lao Ban's time, mm. compared to now, right? Mm. There's definitely some changes Very big in changes. the generation already. Yes. Like, because I, I remember during my days, like if we get scolded, we just have to, you know, suck it, suck it in and just carry on. But mm. what are the, you know, the things that we've encountered or you encountered during this period, like are students more willing to like be, have a strict instructor or you have to change your way of teaching? There's bound to be some changes along the way. So I remember back then, I mean, I'm personally not the bad student, the one that's getting scolded, but then I heard of instances where, especially not in Chinese orchestra, but like in dance uh, CCAs or dance troupe, right? There are teachers who actually take a stick and beat students. Like your posture is wrong and just hit the part of the body that's like not doing the right position. Like, has it, has it, have, have you guys ever heard of such instances? In I mean, um, growing up, getting beaten is part and parcel of learning, you know, whatever. As a Chinese <laughs> or Asian family, because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, not only learning instruments. I mean, personally, Learning instruments, my teacher was very strict, but he doesn't doesn't. You mean your uh, violin instructor? Yeah, or? my violin instructor oh. was very strict. I mean, he he what, screams at me and shouts at me, kind of thing, and um, Will yeah, he physically harm you. No, he won't physically harm me. But in, you know, in primary schools growing up, our teachers the way they uh, punish students is they take cane and they just 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 <laughs> just, whack. just whack us or they just slap us or just pull our ears. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, all, all this. I, I always found it acceptable. Eh? Like yeah, oh, I, will, I also yeah, find it acceptable. It, I mean, maybe, 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 it conforms us into like being like to behave like you know. Oh, I don't want to be beaten. I don't want to get my ear, uh, put. So I'll behave myself. It's it's more of a fear based training kind yeah. of thing. Well, well, I, I, I mean, um, they say spare the rod, and spoil the child. So I believe there is certain merits in uh, putting a little bit of fear. In, in us so that um, we can listen better and yeah can but I also believe that even you instill fear but uh, at the end of the lesson you got to let them know like nothing personal or something like that yeah it was more for their own good yeah okay, so but the, the kids nowadays might not be able to understand this concept yeah so Patrick um, tell us about the learning environment nowadays um, you as a teacher are you still 
<laughs> not, a, not, not there won't be a good way of putting it so just okay. get it out of the back of us. <laughs> are you still able to hit them if need to or, or you know shout at them if I'm still able to hit them I won't be sitting here today. <laughs> uh, we do not condone violence where, yeah. where will you be in jail say no to violence <laughs> <laughs> okay definitely we are not uh, we are not supposed to have any physical um how do they contact? Contact. Mm. Yeah, we are not supposed to have any physical contact uh, with the students. So a lot of time we can only use um, verbal warning. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so there's a difference between a, a warning and a scolding. Okay. Yeah, and one with more authoritative tone and the other one is like really Just straight flat. off personal Yeah, straight attack. off. Yeah. So we need to let the students know, okay, why we do what we do okay. and not just scold them for nothing and just because we have a bad, bad day today and we just use them as a as punching a, bag yeah, as a punching I, bag I mean figurative punching bag not, yeah, not physically yeah, really punching yeah, the yeah. student yeah so uh, it's very important for them to, to know okay what they are doing is wrong we have to use a t stern uh, more stern tone to talk to them um, this is to let them know what they did wrong then after that you need to also uh, find a balance to find a way to encourage them. Oh, so just now what you did is wrong, but now what you did is correct. Mm. So let them know, okay, so what, what is the differences between right and wrong first? Before you just go them without letting know what is wrong with them. Yeah, so I think this is something that we need to take note uh, recently, especially now, uh, kids get emotional damage very easily. Hearing what Patrick said just now, I do have an encounter, not my own, but uh, someone shared it with me. So uh, this is about a student, not scolding the student, uh, but it's more about how this teacher uh, emphasizes a lot on like basic practice, mm -hmm. and always highlighting like uh, the weaker techniques uh, due to the student's unawareness. Mm -hmm. So the teacher remember highlighting this a lot and also very firmly highlighting to a particular student because the student's awareness wasn't there. Obviously, after many, many weeks of like always reinforcing like, oh, please do this correctly. Mm -hmm. So one day, the student's parent messaged the teacher and saying, teacher, you don't have to focus so much on the, on the basics. He won't be doing professional like you. Just let the student take the grading pieces and get cert can already. Yeah, so in the teacher's opinion, right, he felt, the teacher felt like uh, this is also because nowadays uh, students have a lot of stress from different like avenues like there are more homework and this and that. So the teacher in charge came up to the teacher telling, uh, like the teacher in charge would tell uh, teachers in the class that, oh, this student has anxiety, this student has some ma anger management issue. Yeah, so it really makes teaching uh, things that you want to enforce firmly a little difficult nowadays. Yeah, I mean, the, the current climate is a bit more challenging. I wouldn't say a bit... It's a much more challenging. It There's seems. more factors you have to you know take into like uh, how would the parent feel, how would the school feel, like if something happened, what school would the school protect you or you know protect the teacher or the student more without trying to figure out what the situation is just because it's easier. I think there is a shift, a sort of a shift in power to students and to mostly to, parents to parents. Yeah, parents and students now. You know. Parents, as in, I don't know what's happening. I, I mean, You're people, a yourself. people nowadays, <laughs> people nowadays, they take offense easily at a lot of things. Uh. Mm. Yeah, like I remember when I was teaching um, um, enrichment at a certain school, and that was like ten years ago. So, um, I, as part of the curriculum, I had this song play along um, with the ukulele, uh, the song "Raw" by Katy Perry. You know. It's a very uplifting and motivating Yeah, then, that's why I thought I, I mean, I chose that <laughs> song because the, the chords are easy. So one day... <laughs> <laughs> one day, the teacher came and told me that some parent complained that the song is inappropriate. In in, in what way? The I, lyrics. Lyrics? I don't know. The lyrics I was so like... Used to bite my tongue and hold my breath. <laughs> oh, like, maybe so, maybe that so maybe that bite my tongue that that would cause people to like <laughs> bite their yeah, tongue. Ask, ask ask to bite her tongue, kiss on her tongue. <laughs> so yeah. what what happened? So so the teacher um told me that I have to remove the the song just know? because of one parent. Just because complaint. of one parent complained, and I think the it's not justified because I went back and looked at the lyrics. I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Just because the parent don't like this song, I mean, okay, if it's 
inappropriate, I do understand that, but it is nothing like that. And the school, you know, they um, they did not investigate, you know, just because the parent complained and they'll say, okay, just, just take it out for fear of, not really for fear, I mean, maybe they don't want trouble. Easier, easier to just ask the instructor to take away rather than to like submit paperwork. And yeah, get rather than MOE. reply to the teacher, and I mean, reply to the parent that, oh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Then afterwards, maybe the parent will will send an email or even send to MOE. You know, they want to like, like um, just just uh, resolve this. I do understand that, uh, but mm. you know that, but that sets the stage. You know, in the the current envi- environment is like, um, the school doesn't want too much trouble and um, will not be standing on the side of the external instructor. Mm. You know, and uh, whatever the parents say, they have to um address them yeah so that that is um what i think is currently happening do you have any stories to share patrick like regarding to this parent shift in power to mm, the parents i think education comes with three ways the school mm-hmm. the students and the parents mm. so in this case is the instructor the parents and the students we need to have communications like like what the, the example that you gave about the parents actually tell the, the teacher, the instructor, uh, don't need to care about the basics mm-hmm. and just let him go for the grading and stuff. Then if that is the will of the parents, then we will just let it be. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes we cannot force our way of thinking on others. Uh, if that is what they choose, then they have to bear the consequences of the, of the grading results also oh. yeah so if this is what you choose definitely all right so if definitely um as a professional we always want our students to play well even as an amateur mm. okay if some some people say that uh, i want to learn this only for fun but it's not fun when you can't even play a song yeah <laughs> it's not fun when it is is unlistenable, unbearable. Yeah, and you struggle just to learn a very yes, simple tune. So it, it's not fun. The, the fun part only comes after hard work. After you went through a series of hard work, basic training, foundation, firm, you are able to play a song at ease. That's where you truly uh, start to enjoy. Oh, so I can play this. I didn't know that. And now I can play a music that I like. So enjoyment only comes after that. But mm. a lot of students just break down or, or gave up during that period of hardship. Mm. So and th- at this point of time is where the parents need to step in and say, I'll support you, instructor, to, to let's help our, our, our kids to go through this difficult time so that they can truly enjoy this. But if the parents say it's okay, let's just let them be. I just want them to play this without any stress and fun. Then as an instructor, then we have to respect that. Yeah, and also maybe change our teaching style a bit. Yeah. Or- Still try to make sure they play properly, but maybe not so. Yeah, that means we, we have to really put, lower down our expectation a lot just to let them, oh, if you're happy, just do it then. But when the result is, is here and they didn't get good results, then the parents also has no, uh, has no right to come and tell the, 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 the instructor that how come it's like that. Uh, how come the result is not good? Then I have to go back to this is what you want uh-huh. in the first place. So we have to draw the line very clearly. Okay. So we have to tell them, okay, if this is what you want, this is what you're going to get. Then I'm not going to bear the responsibility of the results. But if you want the results that you want, I have the obligation to make sure that he went through this training correctly. So I think it's really communications. I mean, we have expectation, but if the parents and the student doesn't live up to our expectation, then we have to lower our expectation to meet their expectation. But by the end of the day, it's their choice that the results is um, not as good as they wanted, then they have to bear the consequences also. It cannot always be everything is the instructor's problem because there is communication in the first place. Mm -hmm. We are all agreed to something already. So by the end of the day, you get the end results. Then someone who make the choices will have to bear the consequences. This is what they call, you reap what you sow. Mm. But do you think this could have been avoided if at the very start, we already let the parents know like, like this, 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 this. Then yeah, if if you you could work together, like, oh, let's... Like, you know, yes. you communicate with the parents first. Huh? Like, Definitely. If, yeah, that would really save a lot of trouble. But because parents, they are quite 
um, I wouldn't say egoistic, but like very firm with what they really believe in. That this is my child, not mm. your child. Yes. This this is how I'm how I want my child to be educated. Yes, totally uh, respect that. Yeah. So is is like I say, you have to communicate right from the start. So mm. every time when I when I speak to the parents, I will ask them. So how do you want me to help your kids? Mm. Some some because different parents have different expectations. Some wants to go for competitions. Some say I only want grading. Some say I want DSA. Mm. So they have different expectations. So I have to understand what they want. Then I can come up with a series of trainings suited for them. Yeah, because uh, I have a similar like personal experience just recently only. So uh, it's March now. I mean, uh, from recording this, it's March. Uh, so mm. it's just beginning of the year, mm. and it's a primary school. So meaning primary school this year is SYF. Mm. Yeah, so, uh, Singapore Youth Festival. So for our non-Singaporean listeners, so uh, biannually there's going to be this festival uh, music competition. Uh, one year is primary school, one year is secondary school in JC. So this year happened to be the primary school year. So the student that came in, right? Uh, I had to cut out. Half of my time just to get the students settled in, like the basics. Okay, so once I let them settle in, okay, you practice this one, ah, they have to focus on the SYF, uh, kids. Mm. So there's this, uh, back and forth cutting out of time like mm. that. So mm. I thought that I mean I personally thought like oh I'm trying my best to balance both. Mm. So recently, mm. just last week actually, the the teacher came to me and said oh uh this student's parents was complaining like why you never spend all your time on this kid, and then the kid felt left out. Because you're not look, taking after this kid, and you go look at the SYF uh, kid, and then the kid felt like that this kid should join SYF also. But then it's like, so I have to explain to the teachers like, uh, the the student just joined. You know that the SYF piece is not easy for even like a beginner who learned for three months. Mm. Yeah. So the teacher said, okay, okay, I'll communicate with the parents to let them know how this works. Also, yeah. Mm. So that's my personal experience with. Having to communicate with the teacher, with the parents, and letting the student know like uh, what level you're at and when you can join SYF and this kind of thing. So, do you think parents complain too much nowadays? I think they have they have a right to complain, but I also think they need to understand like why we are doing this. Also, mm. yeah. I mean, I do. I'm. Um, I'm. I hear a lot of stories about um, instructors getting into trouble. You know, for certain things that they do or that they say. Okay. You know, um. So I heard of this story of okay. um, an instructor, that um he was using um maybe a pencil or a, or something to um uh, correct the posture of one of the students and um maybe he hit the finger or whatever lah. You know, in the process, so the kid went back home and um complained to the parent. And the parent, instead of um, giving feedback to the school, just immediately went to file a police report. You know, skip so many uh. levels. Usually, you complain to the school, ma. Yeah, if not, you complain to MOE. Uh. <laughs> but he went all the way to um, um, the police, the police, and filed a police report. So, as a result, the instructor was um, suspended, suspended from teaching um, MOE schools. Oh no! So that's really o- overreacting, right? I mean, what is it that? It's so serious about I mean unless he really hit it until there's a bruise or whatever. I mean if you come back home that and 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 you tell your parent that okay my uh, instructor use it I it depends on what the student tells the parent. Uh. Yeah, sometimes students cannot fully describe what happened and then uh parents themselves might take it uh overboard or overreacted. But I think in the parents' defense, they also you know really care about their kids, yeah. But but I mean that's overreacting. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure that all parents care about their kid, but uh, you do not overreact. You you go and find out. You go and investigate. Investigate. You talk to the. But maybe the, not all parents can be level headed. I mean, I mean, I'm not a parent myself, but I think you guys have more, uh, say in how you should. I mean, you guys are parents yourself, ma. Yeah. So maybe you guys can. Yeah, I mean uh, weigh in on this. If my kid comes back with bruises and he say, she tells me that the teacher uh, hit me, then I will be angry, you know, and want to find out. But if the kid comes back and mm-hmm. say that, oh, the teacher used a pencil and hit my finger, for example, then I wouldn't get worked up until I want to file a police report. So it's really an individual parent kind of situation. And then us as instructor, we just do our best to not have this happen. So because, 
Yeah, because of yeah, this, they restrict us. Yeah, <laughs> it's very restrictive. You all cannot try to correct the posture if you cannot touch them. I mean, I have heard of another story of okay. uh, this instructor who was scolding a kid. Uh, the kid was P six. Okay. And uh, because the kid wasn't sitting properly on the f- on the floor, uh, so she was scolding. On the floor. Yeah. She oh. Was, okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Then after that, she scolded her, and uh, said something along the line of along the line of okay, I cannot remember, <laughs> but um, besides maybe like um, you shouldn't be sitting like that because you're a girl and you know oh. you have your male um, Classmate. classmates uh. kind of thing lah. Yeah. Then I think after that, she went to class and she was crying, <laughs> and all the classmates uh gang together and asked her what happened then she told don't know what she told them uh, then the whole lot of them just barge into the vice principal's office and to complain about this instructor yeah and this instructor was called to the vice principal office and uh and she was um asked to stop teaching as well oh. yeah so oh. i think it was it's i i think it's really bad you know that um one thing bad is the Students, they complain about everything, and the second thing is maybe it's because the parents are uh, uh. also like you know what your parents are, your your kid will be like, uh, mm. and the parents also complain about everything. One thing is like you know parents complain a lot, but maybe it's also how kids cannot fully describe things, uh, describe the situation, and then things get out of hand or misinterpreted, uh, misinterpreted. <laughs> Did I say it correct? Misinterpreted. Inter- interpreted yeah uh, yeah but I mean we are all kids right it's not like we were why, all why kids. Now, nowadays kids are more <laughs> stupid Fragile. and they cannot <laughs> interpret things better <laughs> but um, actually sometimes we really need to see the whole picture of the situation mm. there was this instant that I remember um, a student really don't like the instructor and the student actually hurt herself and make herself blues okay. and accused the instructor oh, for bruising oh. her and warned the other students not to tell the truth. And the other student saw how she bruised herself uh-huh. and accused on the instructor, but they dare not say anything. It's like she's the leader of the group. Like that. Ah. Yeah, so she just don't like the instructor because the, the, I think the instructor keep on picking on her and stuff. Okay, and okay. that is how she used this kind of uh, way to revenge on the instructor. So mm-hmm. in the end, the instructor was also uh, banned from teaching in schools <laughs> because of that. But then how how did you get to know that it was um, a fake because injury? Because the, the, the students who are not supposed to say uh-huh. actually leaked some lead some secret to me that say uh, because uh, actually she's the one doing it and stuff you know so I was thinking that even students now are quite smart mm. uh, even though they even they can be dramatic and stuff so we have to really investigate and look into the whole picture of course I believe that the instructor must have done something that became a weak point for them to accuse mm. but I think uh, it the, the coin has two sides. That must be two sides of the story. So I think it is really important for them to, to investigate well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, innocent unless proven guilty. Yeah. So a lot of these instances, they just take the word of the student. So that's why um, the instructor nowadays, they really have a tough job. They really have to uh, watch what they say and cannot really so-called antagonize uh, pupils students but so, okay so I have I have one more experience right uh, submitted this one I, I read through right it's not the school's fault it's not the parents fault it's not the teacher's fault or the student fault so maybe I'll uh, I'll describe the situation and then we'll take a look at it so this recent encounter with the student uh, it was during the beginning of the year then this student was a little indecisive couldn't choose what pick what instrument to to learn so in the end the conductor chose the instrument for this student so the student decided that it's not what the student liked but then the father even wrote into the school to complain saying like oh you, you give my child an instrument that 
she couldn't, she or she don't like. So the problem is, right, the school doesn't have enough instrument to go around. So this, uh, even though the father insisted on it, and in the end, the student didn't really play well and skip most of the uh, CCA and eventually just never even appear anymore. Yeah. So that's like, what is what 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 can we make up of this situation? From what I see is that mm. the first thing is she is indecisive. Mm -hmm. So the conductor pick an instrument for her. He or she will no no. Yeah okay. So but the thing is, after she pick up the instrument, she realized that she does not like the instrument. Mm -hmm. So she has already made a choice that she don't want this instrument already. So, um, she has the right to give up the parents has the right to say, I don't want this instrument. Okay, but this also leads to another thing is, it's not about what you like. It's about responsibility. Mm -hmm. You are now in a group. It's not about you, it's about the whole team. So sometimes when we educate students, we, we, we have to educate values to them also. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you, you like it or not. Responsibility, has nothing to do with emotions. Sometimes we need to do what we need to do. Sometimes we don't like to study, but we still have to study. Sometimes we don't like to go for exam, we still have to wait. I don't feel like working, but I still have to wake up and work. You know, it's not about how we feel. We have responsibilities for certain things. So in a CCA, you have to teach the students what responsibilities are, what teamwork is. You don't like this, you don't want to practice, it's okay. Mm. But what about the whole team? You're dragging the whole team down. Are you thinking about only yourself or are you thinking as a whole team? So let them have an understanding, oh, I cannot just think for myself. I have to think that this is a teamwork. If I don't practice, I drag the whole team down. If I'm going to drag the whole team down, either I quit or I continue to work hard. But I cannot be here and do nothing and I'm continue to drag the whole thing down. So these are the values that I usually would teach my, my students. I always tell them, sometimes I myself don't feel like doing some things. But I have to do it because it has to be done. Mm. Do the right thing, not need to do the thing. Mm. So these are the things that I, I feel that we have to educate both the parents and the students also. Of course, we have to understand in their perspective but they also have to understand our perspective as a as an educator in in the school settings this is a cca if you join this cca there is some form of responsibility you still have to uh, take up mm. uh, this is not about your child your child is special in your eyes but your child is the same as everyone's child mm. <laughs> so this is something that we need to let them know yeah, I think instilling value is one thing that most of us would overlook also. Or like, but do you think, so we've been saying all this on the, like, not faulting the student, but most of the time is like stu uh, the student complaining, parents, but do you think us as instructors, us as teachers, right, there should be some form of like de development, some form of courses, training on like letting us be better communicators to like, you know, eliminate certain problems that might face just because we don't communicate well or like uh, learn to handle classrooms especially uh, kids younger than secondary schools i think all this classroom setting and stuff uh we we, we will learn through experience mm -hmm. and the things that we say are usually things that the school already warned us you know, every year there will be this CCA meeting. Oh, briefing before ah, the school There will be start. briefing and, and the school actually set the standard very yeah. clearly that they always say no physical contact. Or like social media cannot each other. No <laughs> verbal uh, abusive languages. Mm -hmm. So all these things, we as an educator and as an adult, as a mature adult, we should already know that. Mm -hmm. So this is, they already put out the link point. So whether we execute it well enough or not, it depends on our own individual. Mm. We cannot expect every single teacher to go through this course and make it a very, very dead kind of thing, you know. Mm. You know, as a personal kind of thing, I feel that as long as the school already stated what are the do's and what are the don'ts, mm -hmm. you as a mature adult should know what are the do's and what are the don'ts. So like, for example, like you say, um, no physical, uh, whether it's, it's using a pen or what. But the school already stated no physical contact, no matter what your intention is. Mm -hmm. 
the school already be very clear. So when the school already stated this very clear, no matter what your excuses are, you already broken the rules. That is the very first thing that the school will look at. They won't want to listen to, oh, because you really want to help the student, what? Because everything is all by paper, black and white. I already told you no physical contact. Then if you want to have physical contact, ask the student, can I hold a hand to yeah, change your posture? Right. So all these things are already very clear cut. So the, the school are very good at all this because they want to stay yeah, out of the trouble. Of the trouble. <laughs> and, and another way that they, they use it is, this is a way we protect you instructors. Mm. We, we tell you all these things so that you can prevent it from happening. But also sometimes it's really difficult when you are so passionate about teaching, sometimes you forget about all these things we can understand. So we re really need to find a balance mm -hmm. uh, in, in this kind of situation. So like, like you say, do we need to go for a course? Mm. I, I felt that that is not really necessary because I think we are all mature adults to know what are the things to do. And because we are all different human, we, we, we express ourselves differently. As long as we don't use abusive work, we don't have physical contact and stuff, I think the, the, the class can still go well. Even yeah, I think it's important for, yeah. to strike a balance, huh? like nurturing talents and also like uh, instilling discipline. Like yes. It's a balance act also. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, the current climate is uh, different from like 10, 20 years ago. Uh. <laughs> so they have to evolve. Uh. Yeah, and, and us as the adult, we have to approach uh, things in, uh, with more sensitivity, but also have to let the students know like uh, these are the things that you have to go through in order to get to this point. Mm. So approach things sensitively, but also communicate your intentions uh, properly. So there's no like uh, misunderstandings or so. Yeah, Tough la, because you know kids. Communication is mm. is maybe the the key the priority now la, because mm. last time when we learn they don't really communicate with us our teachers right mm. they just teach teach yeah, ask you what to do it's called okay school <laughs> yeah so right yeah. now maybe another different approach is we need to really communicate to kids mm. why we are doing this and why you should do this yeah yeah and of course throughout this whole thing re uh, remain respectful. Yeah, and don't belittle any of the party also. Like yeah. teachers shouldn't, I mean, parents shouldn't belittle the uh, the teacher, teachers shouldn't belittle the kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. Words has power. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I really understand through my experience, uh, not only teaching, even as a child myself, when I have a lot of negative comments on me, right, it actually impacted me internally. Mm -hmm. It actually makes me feel insecure makes me feel less confident of myself by saying all those very abusive kind of words and stuff. So I, I really believe that words has power to either lift you up or to put you down. So we have to be very careful with our words. But last time, 10, 20 years ago, educators do not have this kind of understanding yeah. because that is how they were brought up. True. Yeah, so True. that is how they are brought up. That is how they are trained. That is the only way they know how to train. But when it comes to our our generation now, so we have to make the changes. That is why it's very difficult for us because we are also being schooled and uh, beaten up growing up. <laughs> so during our generation, we are the we are the point of change. We are the turning point. Mm. So we need to change so that the next generation will not will be able to follow us and you will just get better and better and better. Yeah, there's a pro and cons. Like pros is that um, the, the, the students will have a better emotions and growing up and stuff. But the cons is they become very fragile. <laughs> they, they become like a little bit of hardship cannot, a little bit of difficulty cannot. So this is something that we also need to take note that because society is not as lenient as us, no matter how we try to sugarcoat the words that we use, when you get out of the society, nobody cares. Mm. They cannot go back home and cry to their parents and say, this manager or my boss just say harsh word to me, I want to quit. That is not how the society works. If you want to quit, go ahead. Because there are still a lot of people no, lining up for you. <laughs> yeah, you, you are replaceable. That's the thing. Nobody is irreplaceable. No one is special in the society. Only in your family you are. But uh, in the society, you just need to understand there are reality. So we need to really understand that and we need to teach the students. Okay, now you feel it this way, but it's okay. But people fail. 
And what if you fail? So what? Do it again. We just encourage them, but we also let, let, need to let them taste failure. Mm. We cannot always let them, oh, you're so good. You cannot bolster stuff. them. Cannot. Yeah. So they, they need to taste defeat. They need to know how to climb, uh, climb up back and they need to know how to um, face challenges and not to give up attitude and take responsibilities even when things are not going according to their ways. So this is something that we also need to communicate with parents. This is part of education. This is part of educating uh, the values of students growing up in terms of musical and in terms of personal. Then in this way, I believe uh, our next generation will be better. This has been a really inspiring and deep dive, deep look into this entire situation regarding to teaching kids in CCA. We once again want to thank Patrick thank you. for appearing on our podcast and sharing his very insightful experiences. And we hope that our listeners also benefit a little more on our discussion today. So if you're listening up to this point, we want to thank you once again for joining us in Coffee Chat. And of course, you have more things you want to share with us uh, regarding your experience or your opinions on this matter. We would definitely welcome you uh, to leave your messages in uh, the comment section or just direct uh, DM us on our social media. So, and if you haven't followed us or subscribed to us, do click on that subscribe button uh, to catch up or to be informed of our next episodes so once again thank you Patrick to thank joining you, Patrick. us thank you thank you yes uh, once again I'm Anson I'm Sangwa we're from Eastern Music. Music thank you so much see you in the next episode bye bye